All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing uh, this morning. And it will be available for you to watch later in our archives. Uh, if you watch at your convenience later in our archives. And I will show you at the end of today's show uh, where you can access all those archives. Um, Encompass Live, um, the show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in the show. Uh, we do a variety of things here on the show, book reviews, interviews, many training sessions, sessions, demos of services and products. We have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on and do presentations, but we also bring in guest speakers, which is what we have today. Join us today. Today is Brett Bieber. Good morning, Brett. Brett, you do need to unmute yourself. Got it. There we go. Thank you, Krista. Good morning. I apologize. I am getting over a cold and my voice is still not back. <laughs> um, so Brett's going to talk to us about the um, connected um, Nebraska options and how libraries can get involved. So I hand it over to you, Brett, to take it away. Great. Thank you, Krista, and thank you for having us back. Uh, I was uh, presented a Encompass Live session back in September of 2021, and a little bit has changed since we since we last met, <clears throat> and we last talked about this with the Libraries Commission and with the libraries. And so I wanted to take this opportunity to give everyone an update on kind of where we're at with the project and how things have been going uh, since September 2021 to now. February 2024. And one of the reasons why um, I was reminded of how important it is to reach out to the libraries is um, we recently had uh, some interest from the Omaha library system. And so that reminded me. And uh, so I reached out to Krista and thanks again for, for having us on the show. And uh, I'm happy to be here and give you an update on where we're at with Connected Nebraska and also uh, give you some updates on to uh, how the program has progressed and where the program now sits within Network Nebraska. Uh, so I'll introduce myself here. My name is Brett Bieber, and I'm a, an assistant vice president with the University of Nebraska system. And my role has been, uh, for this project, just kind of an advocate to uh, help get the word out around what Edurome can do and what uh, Connected Nebraska and the Edurome wireless option is and how it can help our students and be a part of this digital equity ecosystem within the state of Nebraska. So uh, Connected Nebraska, in, in case you, you aren't aware of what it is, it's a pretty unique program. Uh, it actually brought together a number of different organizations that had never really worked together on a project before. Network Nebraska, which provides connectivity to uh, K through 12 throughout the state, higher education institutions, and is really that education network connecting a number of uh, schools across the state of Nebraska. The Nebraska Department of Education, uh, the office of the CIO, which kind of owns, which owns Network Nebraska, the University of Nebraska, which operates Network Nebraska, uh, but also is a partner in, in broadcasting uh, Edge Room Wireless, which we'll talk about today, and the Nebraska ESU Coordinating Council, so the ESUCC. If you're familiar with that structure within our state, we have educational service units that provide support for uh, a particular geographical region across the state and all the schools within that region. Uh, so this was a kind of a unique project, and that's why it's got a little bit a, a new name uh, or a name that maybe you haven't ever heard before. And this name was a uh, uh, something that my wife and I invented when we were in the kitchen, just trying to brainstorm what should we call this project. So we uh -huh. settled on Connected Nebraska. The goal here is to connect education throughout the state of Nebraska. So that's that's where the name came from. Uh, but really, today I'm here to talk to you about Edurome and what that is. Edurome is the International Wi-Fi Access Roaming Service for Students, and this helps staff, faculty, students across the globe get connected seamlessly to wireless at all the places where they learn. So 
Uh, if I'm a student at the University of Nebraska, I have an Eduroam credential, and that allows me to connect at all participating sites across the United States, uh, but also across the globe. If you're interested in kind of seeing where these are at, which can kind of give you a, a, a better understanding of the scale and scope, there's a couple of resources that might be helpful. And if you just search Eduroam US, there's a there's a map where you can actually zoom in and kind of see where Eduroam is available. I also like the Eduroam Companion mobile app, which is a mobile app you can get and download on your mobile phone. Um, but that's a, a couple of resources just in case you're kind of curious about what this is. I've got a little video. I'm not quite sure. Chris and I didn't didn't test the video here to see if the audio will come through, but I'll try this anyways. It's a very quick intro. Eduroom stands for education romance. Yeah, it's coming through, no problem. It provides secure and easy to use Wi-Fi access in thousands of locations in more than a hundred countries. Once you've connected for the first time, you never need to enter your details again. Eduroam will automatically connect you whenever you're in range of an Eduroam hotspot. The best thing is, the hotspot you're using never sees your details. So, wherever you're roaming, you can love to Eduroam. Eduroam. Simple, easy and secure. So that's a very quick introduction to what Eduroam is and what it means for students and their connectivity. Um, and this was a, a video put together by Jayant, who is the owner of the, the national brand or the international brand of, of Eduroam. Within the United States, we have Internet2 and In Common, and that's who holds the trademarks for Eduroam within the United States. So just in case you're kind of curious, this is a this is a global initiative. This isn't something that is just in Nebraska or just in the United States. This is a global initiative that has been around for many, many years, started in the Netherlands in about 2003. So this is... Uh, pretty, uh, I don't know if you want to call it legacy, but I would say tried, true, uh, scalable and uh, reliable technology that we've been using for many, many years in higher education. The unique thing about um, Nebraska is we're an early adopter within the K through 12 space, which which allows us some unique opportunities there. But uh, so that's a summary of what Eduroam is. What it looks like from the end user's perspective is very simple and it's, uh, I'll show you, uh, in a little bit more detail what was inside that video there. This is a screenshot of what it looks like on my iPhone, for example. I see the Eduroam wireless SSID, and if you attended the Encompass Live session last week, uh, which was with Andrew Sherman around wireless in the libraries, he had a fantastic session around wireless and how important that is, the technologies behind it, et cetera. So in case you're kind of curious and you want to get up to date on some of that, I'd encourage you to take a look at last week's Encompass Live session with Andrews. Uh, that was fantastic information as background. And also he shared some, some resources that uh, the Nebraska Libraries Commission has and also information around E-rate that might be helpful in case you're interested in upgrading your wireless network or getting some additional connectivity there. So take a look at that one. Uh, but from an end user's perspective, uh, I shared, here's a couple of screenshots of what this looks like for an end user. I see the Eduroam SSID. I choose to connect to it. It asks me what my username and password is. And here I put in what for me is my email address and my password and then I get connected to Eduroam. Behind the scenes, that creates a secure connection all the way back to my home institution. And for me, it's it's the Nebraska University of Nebraska. And it passes the credential there securely to my home institution. And I get connected onto the wireless. The nice thing is I do this once and then I can connect everywhere that is providing Eduroam access, which is, which is great. I don't have to do this multiple times. I don't have to ask what the Wi-Fi password is or share a password. So there's a, there's a number of benefits that users get by doing this. But this is a one-time configuration that a user would have to do or a student would have to do. I wanna also mention what Network Nebraska is because some of you might not be aware. Um, I think there are about six members of Network Nebraska that are libraries, but I don't know if, if all of you are aware of what this is. Network Nebraska is owned by the, the state of Nebraska office of the CIO, and it's operated by the University of Nebraska. We partner with the Department of Ed and the ESU Coordinating Council, but really we're providing, Network Nebraska provides that connectivity to higher ed institutions and K through 12s across the state of Nebraska. And I think we have uh, 90, 98 or 99% of the K through 12s within the state are connected to Network Nebraska. Uh, so it's a, it's really is that backbone of educational connectivity to the state of Nebraska. And it is a natural place 
for this program to have its permanent home. So in September of 2021, I'll give you a little recap of where we were at when I was last on Encompass Live. We had some early adopters that were interested in trying this out. Uh, we had uh, 31 locations across the state of Nebraska, but a lot has happened since then. So we've, we've significantly grown the project, not only in Nebraska, but I wanna also share with you what's going on across the United States. The program that we're a part of uh, was started and piloted in Utah in 2020. And in 2021, the state of Nebraska, along with Arizona and the Sun Corridor Network, became a part of what's known as the Edge Room Support Organization. And we provide access and, and the ability for K through 12s, museums, libraries within the state of Nebraska to get connected to Edgerome. And we provide support for that. We answer questions, we help bring people together. But Nebraska was one of the early adopters of this. Since then, we've had other states that have joined. So Link Oregon, uh, the Connecticut Education Network, Washington's K through 20 education network has joined. And then NSHE, which is the Nevada System of Higher Education has joined as well. And we will, this coming month, uh, March and April, we'll be having additional states that are gonna submit proposals around becoming the next states to start rolling this out to their K through 12 uh, schools within their states. So I just wanna share this just to kind of highlight how this has been expanding. What once was something that was started within higher education is now growing to expand to K through 12s and really become uh, the way that students can get connected to wireless internet across the United States. So it's something that I'm, I'm really excited about. I got a lot of passion for it, but I also wanna share a couple of stories with you that kind of highlight um, the success we've had and also some of the opportunities that this presents for being a part of that digital equity ecosystem. So I'll share with you a little bit of story about Omaha, and this is one that I think is, is interesting, uh, and it's also an area where we've seen a lot of growth. So as I mentioned, Edgerome has been around for many, many years within the higher education space. In 2021, we started within, network, within the state of Nebraska to bring that to K through 12s, but around the Omaha area, University of Nebraska, Omaha, UNMC, Creighton, and Doan had Edgerome, and they were broadcasting this within the Omaha area for a while. In 2021, when we started to talk to other ESU leaders across the state about what this could do, we found a champion in ESU3, which is uh, Douglas Cass and I think Sarpy County, just kind of surrounding the main Omaha area. Uh, a lot of that area is um, the educational service unit for ESU3, and Bill Pulte is the CIO there. Bill really understood what some of the vision was for this and what it could do for students and the connectivity. So he became a champion within the Omaha area. And I really, I, uh, I believe Bill is, is, the, is the reason why we have a lot of this growth within the Omaha area. So started with ESU3 and um, uh, getting it within their district uh, and ESU administration offices there. And then we also had Omaha Public Schools that, that joined, Millard Public Schools, uh, followed on with a very large announcement and I've got a QR code there in case you're kind of interested in reading about what this is and this was the first of its kind partnership. This is another one that Bill helped us get started. Conversations with Cox Communications around broadcasting edge room on those municipal Wi-Fi hotspots that they have around the Omaha metro area which is just a first of its kind. Uh, hasn't We haven't seen any of this uh, within the United States before and so it's a really exciting program where we've got not only the higher education schools uh, within the Omaha area, we have the ESU supporting the, the schools around there, we have the public schools and also private internet service providers and now Omaha Public Library as a partner in this. So with Cox Communications alone, this will be adding about 600 locations across the Omaha metro area where students can get connected seamlessly. And that is something that really can change the narrative and really um, provide that seamless connectivity for students that either don't have connectivity, uh, urban poverty where they don't have uh, the, the ability to connect and just enabling this access so that a teacher can provide a device to that student and know with confidence that they can get connected in many places so they can get connected to the internet. So it's something that's really excited and I just wanted to highlight uh, that finding champions like this is, is something that's gonna 
safety uh, has been key to our success. I'll show you a little map here of the Omaha metro area. And these are the locations that are broadcasting right now, including those schools, libraries, and also the um, a few other locations that we have across the Omaha metro area. With Cox Communications, which I don't have the pinpoints for yet, uh, that will add this and it will just really expand that connectivity across the Omaha metro area. So where are we at? I, I mentioned that in September of 2021, we had 31 locations across the, a number of uh, areas across the state of Nebraska. This is where we're at right now. We've got 94% of the ESUs are on board with this, understand the technology and have signed up. We have uh, about 69, 70% of the school districts in the state of Nebraska. And that represents about 70% of the students. And I just updated this stat today because um, I, I look at this regularly, but I was surprised when I worked on these slides uh, last week or the week before we had 260 hotspots across Nebraska, and now we have uh, 285. So that's kind of the, the base. On top of that, we will have those 600 that I mentioned before. Here's a chart just kind of showing the growth, and this represents the three years of growth that we've had with the program. And this is the identity providers, which is the schools, the key through 12s, and also service provider locations. A service provider location is just a place that wants to share their wireless with students and has started broadcasting at your own. Service provider locations can be a pizza, pizza shop, it can be a, a coffee shop, it could be a conference center. Uh, so for example, the Eunice Conference Center is in, in Kearney, a great place where we have our, our NIDA Educational Technology Conference, um, as well as the Omaha CHI. We've been able to work with those uh, conference centers and get them to broadcast Eduron as well, so that when our conferences are there for education, uh, students and, and the administrators can get connected seamlessly. Uh, but what, what was kind of exciting for me is when we add these 600 uh, uh, hotspot locations from Cox Communications, this is going to really um, change what this means for, for students, especially within that Omaha area. So it's a, it's a, been an exciting project to be a part of. And uh, next I'll kind of show you what this geographically means across the state of Nebraska. So this is where we started, and as you can see, uh, over the months and uh, the years that we've spent, we've seen significant adoption and just increasing the number of locations and schools that are partnering. Um, some of you may recognize these locations, but I'd encourage you to pull up those maps that I've mentioned before and kind of zoom in and see if inside your community you have a K-12 partner that is already broadcasting Edgerome. And there are more that are coming, but uh, these are the locations that actually have students connecting today, uh, which is really exciting to see. And some of these uh, were deployed by the ESU just uh, en masse. They just added it to all of the school districts within their ESU. So deploying the technology is fairly easy. Uh, it does take a little bit of configuration on the technical side, but we do have resources to help out with that. I also just wanted to reiterate that this is not just Nebraska. Here is a screenshot of the locations that are all across the United States. And it gives me a little bit of pride to have uh, all of the density that we do have within the state of Nebraska here. So it's kind of interesting to see that we're kind of growing from the middle out, which uh, I love. Uh, and Utah- wow, that is amazing. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, it's really has become a, a, a really, fantastic program and a great way for students to get connected. And as I mentioned that this has been in higher education for a long time, but now bringing it to the K through 12 space is a really, um, you know, as another part of that digital equity ecosystem, you know, this can be another way to contribute to connectivity for students, which is so important. Uh, and then also, as I mentioned before, this is not just the United States, this is a global initiative and it's been around for uh, over 20 years. So it's a, a really exciting uh, project and program to be a part of. So I want to mention, what does this mean for Network Nebraska, especially for Network Nebraska members uh, that are from the libraries? So there are six uh, libraries that are members of Network Nebraska. I, I want to be clear here, you don't have to be a member of Network Nebraska to broadcast at Jerome. Uh, if you just want to share the internet access, and make it so that students and teachers can seamlessly connect at your library, that's no problem. That would be what we would call a service provider hotspot. And I mentioned that we've got 
uh, pizza kitchen in Milford. Uh, we have, we've got coffee shops, we have conference centers, and those are places that just want to share the internet and want to make it easier for uh, students to get connected. Within the city of Lincoln, we got a number of those hotspot locations that are supported by Allo Communications. So um, the Children's Museum, uh, Boys and Girls Club, uh, People City Mission, some of those places that have just a, a closer connection with the community and want to provide that seamless connectivity for students. If you are a member of Network Nebraska, what that means for your staff is that you can be an identity provider. And what that means is that your staff can have their credentials access all of these edge room locations and get connected seamlessly, just like a student would. Now, I'm not talking about patrons. Patrons is a completely different story, but for your staff, library staff that, uh, you know, especially in higher education, we consider the libraries, the librarians faculty. They're, they're in the educational mission, they're part of the educational mission, uh, but the members of Network Nebraska do support this program and are supporting this program permanently. So those uh, members of Network Nebraska will have the ability to, if, if they would like to, have their staff members get edge room credentials so that they can connect as well uh, as the students. So I just wanted to kind of clarify that. There's no cost if you want to just start broadcasting Edge and Rome and allow your students to connect. But if you are a Network Nebraska member, uh, that gives you a little bit different uh, access to the Edge Room network. So that's great information, Brett. That's uh, great. But uh, wh what does this actually mean? And, and show me some, some real data around what this means. Well, I wanted to share a report. And this is a sample of a report that we would get monthly uh, from Internet2 and in common, and this shows the mobility that we're seeing. I'm showing you right now a screenshot of one page of a, of a very long multi-page report that has a graphical information around the mobility that we're seeing. So this is a report from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, uh, just the Lincoln campus alone, and it's showing where are our guests coming from, meaning we hosted someone that was a visitor and where were they coming from where they had an edge room credential? So you can see on the list to the right, all of the institutions and all of those little circles across the United States where the University of Nebraska Lincoln has hosted uh, visitors. So the Med Center is a number one location, which isn't a surprise to me. We have Med Center facilities on the University of Nebraska Lincoln campus, uh, but also University of South Dakota, University of Iowa, Iowa State. So as you can see, a number of these are in the higher ed space. And as we continue to expand in the K through 12 space, you'll, you'll begin to see this grow more and more and more as more students have devices that have edge room credentials that are automatically uh, configured to connect. So you'll see in the list there, ESU 18, Lincoln Public Schools, ESU 7, ESU 2, Ashland, et cetera. So all of these uh, schools, um, this represents a student or an administrator, staff, faculty that was able to connect without having to look up or find out what's the wireless password um, or ask IT for help getting connected. This represents all of those users that were able to connect seamlessly without IT having to get involved and answer any questions. So that's another exciting uh, opportunity here is that you've really simplified and this demonstrates that mobility and, and simplifying the how users can access the network. Within the K-12 through space, uh, this is a report from the Connected Nebraska uh, support organization, and this is just the K-12s. through So I have a report here that just shows uh, the K-12s through and where they were hosting visitors. So as you can see, um, we've hosted visitors from all across the United States, just the same as the higher education, but these are the K-12 through locations that are broadcasting edge room. Where have they hosted visitors from? And now you can see that ESU6 users from York Public Schools are getting connected at other schools that, as they travel around. So whether that's for a, a athletics competition, it's for a, a debate speech, something like that, uh, or just simply going to other schools, um, we've got a number of teachers that are shared across school districts. So you might be a music teacher and you might need to go to multiple schools because you teach it at multiple schools. Um, this is another way of simplifying that access. But this data kind of shows just the mobility across the state of Nebraska and also that we have visitors and guests coming into those schools from all across the country that have edge room credentials in their hands 
And this is another example of them just uh, being able to seamlessly connect. I so, think this is one of the things that a lot of people don't, this is one of the things that I think is just amazing about it. You know, a lot of people think about getting the students and researchers the access where they're, while they're at their school, but it's, they can go anywhere and have the internet. And that's just amazing, I think. Yeah. It's, that's one uh, of the features that a lot of people don't really uh, realize. <laughs> Yeah, and, and how much it has alleviated some of the burden on the technical staff just to help with connectivity. So uh, an example that I heard from uh, one of the ESU uh, technical directors was every year for the wrestling uh, competition that they had or the wrestling um, uh, where, the, where they host a wrestling competition, they would have to set up a separate wireless network for that. And then they'd have to share that with all the other schools that were participating so that they could get connected. But now with Edgerome, they already have that deployed. They don't have to set up a separate network, share the password so that everyone connects to an open wireless network with a shared password uh, and can potentially snoop on your activi activity. The Edgerome network is a secure network and they can have that up and running constantly and have that uh, just broadcast as their native network. And now all of those visitors can just get connected seamlessly. So it's eliminated some of the burden on those technical directors as well, and also allowed those visitors to, uh, from, from other educational institutions again, allowing them to connect seamlessly. So I wanted to mention also that uh, if you're interested in this, we've got a number of resources. Uh, you might also see some of these resources if you go and you visit some of these locations. So we have some marketing materials and uh, on Valentine's Day, I wanted to, to highlight uh, some of the resources that are available. Uh, the Love to Edgerome stickers, that's the hashtag that they like to use. But these Love to Edgerome stickers, they, they have those available to, to download and to print in case you want to print any of those out. We also have those for the state of Nebraska. And these were kind of modeled after I saw a couple of, of those from Utah. So the Two in the lower left-hand side here are for the state of Utah and their Edgerome rollout uh, that are in the shape of the state, and they highlight some of the scenes or the, the parks that they have within the state of Utah. So Dinosaur uh, Park and then also just the, the uh, range, the, the mountain range there in Utah. So we saw those and we just thought that is a fantastic way to kind of highlight this and also give a little bit of local representation for what this means within our state. So we have a few of these as well. So uh, Edgerome stickers, and, and I've got a few of these available, but uh, Edgerome um, stickers that represent the Lincoln and the state capitol, uh, some of the skyline from Omaha, and also this one is my favorite, the Chimney Rock, that kind of represents yeah. uh, the state of Nebraska, really that iconic um, uh, visual representation. So scan the QR code in case you kind of want to see some of those marketing materials. That'll also take you to the Connected Nebraska website uh, where we have a lot of other information around what this program is, how to um, learn more about it. Uh, but I, I'm really um, anxious to hear more from all of the libraries and folks that are participating today if they have any questions, uh, and also give you some action items and next steps in case you're interested in learning about what this, what this can do and, and if you're interested in doing this. The first thing I would say is take a look at those maps uh, and, and I would connect with your local ESU uh, because they are likely the technical people that are familiar with the deployment strategy within that region that you're at. So if, if you're familiar with the ESU uh, technical folks, I would connect with them. I would reach out to the educational service unit within your area and talk to them about where they're at with the deployment of Edgerome within the school district. The, this is kind of a match made in heaven. If we've got whether there's a higher education institution in your area, the K through 12s, the libraries and the museums, all participating in this together, that I think is a really great way to provide that seamless connectivity and allowing students to connect everywhere they learn. So I would connect with those others that are in your communities that are already doing this. Uh, so start with the ESU um, technical directors. I think, I think you'll be encouraged to hear uh, how they're coming along. And also, I think they'll be excited to hear that the libraries are, are interested in being a partner in this as well. You can also submit an interest form. So on the website, connectednebraska.com, there's on our homepage here, there's a lot of ways to, to get there. We've got three different ways on the homepage to get to the, the interest form, but click on that and submit, a, submit an interest form. 
And um, what we'll do with that is we can add you to the Edge Room Federation Manager. There is a little bit of configuration behind the scenes. You have to know how to configure your wireless network on your uh, within your technology in the library. And you need to know how to configure it to refer authentication up to the Edgerome top level radio servers within the United States. And we have information on how to do this. It's not difficult. When we wanted to get this going at uh, UNIS, uh, the conference center in Kearney, we were able to do this within an hour or so and get that configured. So it's not a difficult process, but you do need to know some information about, about your wireless network. And again, if you if you want to learn more about that, I would encourage you to, to check out the Encompass Live from last week with Andrew Sherman because he shared a, a lot of fantastic information around wireless in the libraries. So if you if you need a little bit more information around that or you're interested in upgrading that wireless technology, check out that Encompass Live and reach out to Andrew Sherman. I, he offered to to answer questions that you all have about that. Um, but if you're familiar with the wireless network within your library, uh, it's, it's fairly easy to configure. And we also have a number of other resources that might be familiar with your particular technology to answer those questions that you have. But with that, you can begin broadcasting Edge Room and allowing those uh, students and uh, teachers to seamlessly connect. And I think you'd be surprised uh, if you turn this on uh, how many students and uh, teachers do connect and, and, and all of that mobility that we're seeing uh, within the state. And then just like Bill Pulte, who is my, my hero within the Omaha area, become an ambassador for this uh, and start talking to others within your community around what this could do for enabling and, and closing that digital divide by allowing students to connect at more places just seamlessly. So think of other places, museums, coffee shops, and other educational hotspots around your community uh, that might be interested in participating as well. We do have so, something that has a question about this. Um, would would this any way in, like um, bog down their Wi-Fi network for other people needing to use it for not EduRoam related? Yeah, so that's a good question. If you want to, you can actually configure the, uh, well, I, I'll should, I should say, some uh, wireless setups allow you to configure specific networks to only have or only take up a certain amount of bandwidth. Ah, that um, would be the answer, yep, okay. So you could do that if, you, if you're interested in doing that. Uh, but really, this doesn't give you more <laughs> internet. It doesn't add more internet or more speed. So if you're already having connectivity issues, that's a problem that you need to solve. You need First, to work yes. on the connectivity and make sure that your library has a uh, good wireless service. But really what this is, is allowing those students to seamlessly connect so that they don't have to find out what's the wireless password. And as long as they're still affiliated with that educational institution, whether it's a K through 12 or a higher education institution, um, that, allow, that is what allows them to connect seamlessly. Uh, so it, it doesn't add any new internet. It doesn't make make things go faster. It just allows the students to connect seamlessly um, wherever you want to share your internet. So hopefully that helps answer that question. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's the information that I had today. I also wanted to give my contact information. So here's my name and my email address. And Becca Kingery is with the uh, Network Nebraska and really is another champion of this. I don't know if Becca's on today, but uh, she's my my kind of partner in, in getting the word out around this. And because Network Nebraska is the permanent home of the Edge of Rome program within the state of Nebraska, Network Nebraska is gonna be that, that partner that will continue to uh, be a resource for everybody. Uh, so with that, I've got uh, the QR codes here. That'll take you to the website. And feel free to reach out to me and email if you have any questions around this. But I'm also here available to answer any questions that you have right now. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, um, anybody has any questions, anything you want to know more about it, if you're wondering about doing this at your library, uh, type into the question section. Um, or if you have done this, uh, we'd love to hear uh, testimonials, I suppose, <laughs> about um, how it's gone at your um, library or for your students. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll add that at the University of Nebraska, we of course broadcast this within our libraries. Um, it's it's a as I mentioned, it's it's become our native network within the educational uh, sector. So 
that's our default network that we get everyone connected to automatically. And so it, we broadcast it within our libraries at the university. And um, it is that uh, it's our default network and we get our students and faculty set up to use this natively so that if they travel or as they go anywhere across the state or even to the K through 12s that are broadcasting this as well, they can get seamlessly connected. Um, well, one other question that comes up and I'll, I'll uh, Krista, feel free to interrupt me if I if there's a question that comes in, but, but I'll uh, answer a question that is common that we get. And that question is, uh, does this introduce any new filtering requirements for uh, content or anything like that? And I'll say, this program does not introduce any new filtering requirements. So whatever you are currently doing for your filtering, uh, that's fine. And uh, this program does not introduce any new uh, content filtering requirements on on your your library or wi your wireless network. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, definitely. Since it's education related, people may wonder about that. Yeah, or student and school related. Yeah. Yeah, and the the best advice that we've that we've shared through all the K through 12s is that um, they should be placing the content filtering and those sort of controls on the devices themselves. And so that's where we really encourage. Um, we encourage uh, the K through 12 deployments to focus on that uh, because the name of the wireless network isn't something that you should rely on for making sure that it's filtered. You know, if, if uh, um, there is no guarantee that any of the content is going to be filtered, it really is up to that individual deployer or the individual site that's broadcasting Edgerum to decide uh, what content they want to right. let through. So, so this program doesn't introduce any new or additional filtering requirements at all. So that's something to be aware of. Yeah, if you've got your K through 12 students going all over the country and using this, it's not going to be using whatever, unless you put it on the device that they're using, it's not going to be filtering to your home school's uh, uh, requirements. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, network filtering. Right? It doesn't create like a secure tunnel <laughs> to your school and then provide a VPN or anything like that. Right, this right. is just simplifying uh, wireless access and you get whatever internet that that local, local location is providing. Just right. like if you went to a coffee shop and connected to the wireless there, they're gonna get whatever that coffee shop is, is providing. Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. And if you wanted any sort of filtering, it would be on your own laptop or your own device if you yep. want, yeah. you know, when you're out and about into, in public areas, absolutely. All right, so we just want to clarify um, some uh, questions we'll have. Um, so to provide just the edge room connection, you don't have to be a um, network network Nebraska, part of on network Nebraska, but that is something you can do if you want to. <laughs> yep, that's right. So if, if you're not a member of network Nebraska, um, that's fine. Service providers or what we call hotspot locations, those are just that was another question. So I want to know what's required to be a service provider hotspot. That's different than what you talked about about a school or doing it themselves or a library. That's, yeah, so a hotspot is really just someone that has uh, wireless that they want to share with students and with education as a whole. And uh, there's no cost to be a, a service provider. Those locations or ID or uh, hotspots. Those are just enhancing the service and making it more valuable to the schools that have participated in this. Um, so there's no charge for that. If you are a Network Nebraska member, and one of the benefits that you would get, especially being a, a, a library as a member, or the K through 12s that are members, or the higher ed, ed institutions that are members, um, this program is just another service that they get. And uh, your users, your librarians, your staff from your library can connect and connect at all of these edge room locations with their own identities. So um, that's an advantage of being a member of Network Nebraska, uh, just like uh, we are today uh, at the University of Nebraska, we're a participant in edge room and I have through my identity, uh, I can connect at all these locations across the state, across the globe. Right, so, to, so for um, cost, to just be a school or a library that offers Edgerum or to be a service provider hotspot, there's no cost to the... Yeah, to be a service that. provider hotspot, there's no cost. Um, okay. You hit the interest form and we can help get you get you set up. 
and we've done that with many locations you know just like i mentioned before the Eunice conference center the pizza kitchen in milford and um yeah no cost for those so the only cost would come in if you decided to make that extra leap to join uh to be part of network nebraska Absolutely. And if you're interested, the, the Network Nebraska website has a, a number of informational resources on yeah. what that means to be a member of Network Nebraska, what you get as a as a member of Network Nebraska. And um, uh, Becca Kingery can answer any questions in case folks are interested in learning more about what it means to be a member of Network Nebraska. Right. Yeah, we've had Becca on with us before, uh, not on Incomes Live, but when we've done um, webinars about um, E-rate and um, fiber connections and your options for doing that. So if you want to look into any of our E-rate fiber uh, sessions that we've done about fiber and special construction, there's a lot of information in there uh, from Becca about um, what's it, what you get for being part of Nebraska and all the costs and everything. Um, but also you can just, yeah, reach out to her if you're interested too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yep, Becca is, she is the the resource within our state. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. Um, another question here, um, does EduRoam utilize a, a unique SSID at a service provider? Yeah, it is, and it has to be named kind of exactly what I had shown in, um, there was a slide that I showed earlier on, which is just EduRoam, all lowercase, that is the name of the SSID, mm -hmm. and then for the authentication that you configure it, it's not using a, a, a pre-shared it's not using a, a shared password or something like that. You actually have to configure it to use uh, 8021X authentication, and then you place the radius server that you want to connect to, and that is the top level radius servers for the United States. So mm -hmm. what happens there is the user sees the Edgerome SSID, they see that it's a secure network, they choose to connect to the SSID, and then it brings up what their enterprise username and password is if they have never connected before. It'll prompt them for that username and password. And uh, for most institutions, it's a username and password. You can also use certificate-based authentication if you're uh, that advanced. But for me, it, it looks like my email address and my password. That's exactly what it is, brett.bieber at nebraska.edu and my password. And once I do that for the first time, I get connected. And then my device remembers that the Edgerome network is a uh, location. And it remembers the credentials and stores them just on my device. And when I go to visit another location, that connection is established through the Internet 2 top-level radius servers all the way back to my home institution, creates a secure connection there, and only then is my password exchanged all the way back to my home institution to validate that I still am an aff affiliated with an educational institution. And after that happens, uh, I'm allowed onto the wireless network. So it, the SSID does have to be configured very specifically for Edgerom, and you do have to configure it to be an authenticated network that is using 8021X authentication that refers it to the top level radius servers for the United States. Sounds good. Thank you, yes. And if that, and if that was way too technical, <laughs> I'll say we, we host, uh, we have a, a calls a, every, other, every other week where we bring technical folks together to answer questions, talk about deployment strategies, et cetera. And as I mentioned before, we have a lot of a variety of technology deployed throughout the state, especially in the K through 12 space. And so it's likely that we probably have someone uh, familiar with the technology that you're using within your library. So whether it's a uh, Ruckus or Ubiquity or Cisco or whatever it is, we likely have another resource that is familiar with how to configure that. And I'll say some of the manufacturers themselves, because this is just very common within the educational space. Uh, Cisco, for example, they publish information around how to connect to Edgerome, and that's provided by the vendor. So uh, there may be documentation already available from your wireless um, access point or your, uh, your wireless manufacturer around how to connect to Edgerome. Yeah, um, and actually, Sherm, Andrew Sherman here is one asking some of these questions. He's on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and we, now we we are offering for the Library Commission. Um, you know, he helps with libraries getting set up with their routers and, and all of their network equipment. Um, so he could definitely help with libraries to um, figure out where this all this is in their system, so they know what they need to um, how they need to set it up. Absolutely. And, and thank particular you, routers, get them set up and going. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And thank you, Andrew, for the session last week that covered a lot of that great information around just the basics of wireless technology within the libraries and what resources are available. So as I, as I mentioned before, go back and view that one if, if you want to learn more about wireless, because that is a foundational technology that you need to have in place and working properly with good connectivity and good um, uh, access speeds. And um, uh, you need to have that kind of as a foundation before you take the leap to start sharing that internet access uh, seamlessly with students so yeah yeah we kind of we unintentionally did these two shows right in a row um it wasn't planned to do, on purpose to have them one right after the other it's just when we had them fall into the schedule so um Perfect. it's crazy we had that beforehand and i will when i post uh, what well, i'm going to do since you've been mentioning a lot when i post the um recording for today's show i'll add a link back to um the sherm session from last week so that people don't have to go searching around for it I'll make sure I'll give you all that, that directly good. there. All right, so does anybody have any other questions? They've kind of uh, slowed down a bit. Uh, uh, does anybody have anything else you want to ask Brett about this? Um, I'm going to uh, bring up my screen here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Over here, there we go. Um, so we got a lot of thank yous coming through. So I'll show you where we have our archives and how all this works here. Uh, so if um, if you have any other questions, go ahead and type them in. We still have about 10 minutes left in the hour, so we still can answer any questions you have um, for um, Brett or even for Sherm, since he's on the line, if you wanted to ask him something, um, since he's here in the audience. Uh, but if you use your search engine of choice and type in Encompass Live, you will come up with uh, our main web page and our archive page. This is the session page for today's show, but I'm going to go to our main Encompass Live page where you see we've got our upcoming shows. Our, our link to all of our archives is um, underneath our upcoming shows. And you'll see there's the one from last week that we've been talking about, Wi-Fi in the library. You've got a recording and Sherm slides. So um, definitely watch that one. Today's show will be at the top of the list here. Our should be up by the end of the day tomorrow. We'll have a link to the recording on our YouTube channel and a link to uh, Brett's slides. You can just send me those when you get a chance after the show today. Um, and while we're here, I will show you um, this is uh, there's a search feature here that you can search our show archives if you're wondering. Oh, oh first of all, anyone, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know that the um, recording is available and ready. Uh, so you'll know when that's up here. Um, we also push it out onto our various social media. We have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. You can see here uh, we promote about when recordings are up, um, present your information. Where's this one? The things in here. There, recording in yesterday's is when we announced the recording in the Wi-Fi one. Um, we also use the Encomp Live hashtag uh, on our uh, Twitter and Instagram, the other two things we use. But here we do have a search feature in our show archives. If you want to know if we've done something on a show on a particular topic, go ahead and search for them here. Um, I will warn you can do our full show archives or just do the most recent 12 months if you want uh, just something very current. Um, because this is our full archives and I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom because this is a very, very long list. Uh, Encompass Live premiered in January 2009. So this is our 16th year of the show. Oh my gosh. Uh, and we have all of our shows here. Um, we have them all hosted right now on YouTube. And as long as we have a place to keep them all, we will always have them available to you um, to watch. You know, that's something libraries do, keep things for historical purposes. But do pay attention when you are watching a show on here to the original broadcast date. Um, everything says, you know, when it was first done. Um, uh, and uh, some of the shows will be fine to watch, continue watching, stand the test of time, but some things will become old, outdated, you know, resources may change drastically, people won't work at the same library or same institution they did when they presented for us possibly. Some services and resources may not exist anymore. Um, links may be broken, you don't have the, um, so just pay attention to the original broadcast date when you do watch something. Um, and what the content of the uh, um, show is, you know, and think about that if this actually is something from 10 years ago, really something valid to still watch. We just want to watch it for fun historical purposes. 
Uh, all right. Uh, so I didn't see any other questions come in. Um, any last words, Brett, that you want to share before we do wrap things up officially here today? Uh, just thank you, Christopher, for having us back again. And I was I'm glad to have the opportunity to give you all an update on where we're at since we since we first talked about this back in 2021. Made yeah. a lot of progress since then, and I'm looking oh, yes. forward to having uh, more libraries uh, participate. And uh, just feel free to reach out. Happy to help, and I'm just excited for where we're headed with uh, trying to close the digital divide. Definitely, and we are here to help as well. We want um, libraries are all about that as well. So uh, yeah, if you're interested to reach out um, and get yourself set up as um, be able to provide this at your home through your library. All right, so that'll wrap it up for today's show. Thank you, Brett. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, I'll be joining us next week. Our show is using creativity to grow and develop. Um, Justin is a librarian who is going to be joining us. He's done a lot of things all over the world. He's worked in New Zealand, USA libraries. He's going to talk about um, moving um, in doing different things um, in your career. So um, children's leadership, all sorts of things he's gonna talk about. He's a great guy. So he'll be with us next week. So please do sign up for that. Um, you'll see I'm getting some of the March dates on here. So keep an eye on our uh, scheduled calendar here as I get more shows uh, confirmed and on the Encompass Live calendar. And then one last thing I do wanna mention is coming up, oh, I've gotta get back to the top here. Next Friday, February 23rd is Big Talk from Small Libraries. That is our annual online conference that we host along with the Association for Rural and Small Libraries, ARSL, where all of our presenters are from, it's a one day free online conference. All of our presenters are from libraries um, of all types that serve populations or um, students with a FTE of 10,000 or less. Um, there's no um, vendors or promoters or selling something on here. It's just all the libraries talking about what they're doing. Uh, the full schedule is available so you can see who um, is presenting, what the topics are. Registration has been open, so please do sign up and register uh, for it. We have a Facebook page. We have a Twitter account where we're sharing out information um, about the different presenters, um, meet the speakers, posts. Uh, something I'm very excited about, we are going to have um, the best small library in America on. Um, this is an award done through Library Journal that's been done for, oh, I don't even remember, for years and years. I think it started in 2005. Don't quote me on that. But um, they did pause the award. They did not offer it, had not offered it since the pandemic started. Um, but they finally brought it back in 2023 for the first, first time since the pandemic started. And we are going to have Debbie and Sarah on um, from Page Public Library in Arizona to talk about um, being the best small library in America 2023. Um, but keep an eye on our page and I'll we'll be posting a lot of more Meet the Speaker uh, posts as well. But please do register, spread the word. It is free and open to anyone to watch. Um, both Big Talk and Encompass Live, but definitely spread the word about this one um, annual conference we have. It's always the last Friday in February, um, and that is next Friday. All right, so that wraps it up for today. Thank you again, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Brett. Good to see you again. Um, maybe we'll have you on again when we, um, in another couple of years and see how things are going with the Edge Room. Happy to do it. Thanks yeah. again. Yeah, all right. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye.